Hello and welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, we are going to learn about input offset voltage. Ideally, if no input is applied to an op-amp like we see here, the output voltage should be zero because V out is the open loop voltage gain times the difference between the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and the voltage at the inverting terminal. And if both those voltages are zero, you would expect the output to be zero too. In reality, there will be a non-zero output voltage due to mismatches in the internal circuitry of the op-amp. The input offset voltage by definition is the voltage that must be applied across the two inputs to get zero volts at the output. And the input offset voltage, which is indicated by this VIO, or alternatively often VOS, can be positive or negative. And it also varies from device to device, even if it's the same part from the same wafer lot. To model VIO in a circuit, it is represented by a voltage source that is in series with either the positive or the negative input terminal. Remember though that VIO is internal to the op-amp, so it might be better represented inside the op-amp symbol. Input offset voltage is unavoidable because it's due to mismatches in the input transistors of the op-amp that arise during fabrication. Semiconductor fabrication is not a 100% precise process. There can be differences in the doping levels and also in the sizes of doped areas. So with the input stage of most op-amps looking something like this, Q1 attaches to the non-inverting input and Q2 attaches to the inverting input. And these Qs could be BJTs or they could be FETs. Mismatches occur between Q1 and Q2 that can lead to slight differences in the current flowing down the two sides. And that results in the voltage at the non-inverting side being slightly different than the voltage at the inverting side. Input offset voltage can range from less than one microvolt to more than tens of millivolts. And to make it even more challenging to deal with, it can change with temperature and even with time. These two circuits are the non-inverting amplifier and the inverting amplifier configurations with the input offset voltage included. And to get a better understanding of the input offset voltage, let's take a look at the impact of it on each of these circuits. And let's start with the non-inverting configuration. The voltage at the non-inverting pin of the op-amp is going to be equal to the input voltage plus the input offset voltage, according to our model. And that means that the output voltage is equal to V in plus VIO times the gain of the non-inverting amplifier, which you should know as one plus RF over RG. And distributing these terms over the gain, we have V in times one plus RF over RG, which is the value of gain that we want, plus the input offset voltage times that gain. So as you can imagine, if this gain is really big, then the contribution of the input offset voltage to the output voltage could also be very big. I mean, even if we're dealing with an input offset voltage of one millivolt, if this gain is 100, then the output's going to be affected by 100 millivolts. Now let's do the same thing for the inverting amplifier. Well, to figure out V out for this, we can just use superposition. So we can consider the output due to just V in. So that will be negative RFB over RI times V in, plus the value of V out due to just VIO. So that will then be plus one plus RFB over R in times VIO. So again, we get that amount as the output due to the input offset. So if this value is big, you could have something in the millivolt range, the tens of millivolts, or even hundreds of millivolts range. So in general terms, this is what the effect of the input offset voltage is. But how do you know exactly how much that input offset voltage is? Well, you could look at a data sheet and it will tell you what the maximum value is going to be. But there's still a range of values that it could be. So if you want to know exactly the value, you could build a measurement circuit and one such circuit looks like this. The voltage across R over here represents the input offset voltage. And the feedback from the second op amp creates a gain of a thousand for the circuit, which is then applied to the input offset voltage. So the value that you get at the output then is a thousand times the input offset voltage minus a thousand times VIO. So then to figure out VIO, it will simply be the output voltage that you measured divided by a thousand or negative a thousand. But if it's a sine wave, you just care about the amplitudes when you're doing this measurement anyway. This part of the circuit here with this resistor and capacitor is simply there to filter high frequency oscillations so that the output is more stable. If the offset voltage of the op amp is too much for your application, 
you'll need to do something to reduce or compensate for it. Older op amps like the ever-present LM741 and even some newer op amps have included offset pins that allow you to connect the potentiometer and adjust it to remove the offset voltage. This connection here is pin one and this connection here is pin five. And as the potentiometer is adjusted, the voltage balance at the differential input of the op amp changes to compensate for the voltage offset. And this circuit diagram shows the internal circuitry of the LM741 and you can see where the offset null pins are, there's pin one and pin five, and this external circuitry would connect like this. In a much simpler view, the offset null circuitry would connect something like this. If you need to use an op amp with a higher offset voltage than you want, and it doesn't have built-in offset nulling like the LM741 does, you can always use external circuitry to compensate for the offset voltage. This very easy method that I've shown here uses capacitors at the input and at the output, and it works because VIO is a DC value, and no DC current is going to flow through this RI here. Therefore, the voltage gain due to just the input offset voltage will be unity. It'll be one because the feedback currents can't go through RI, so the feedback only consists of RFB here. However, since your VN here is going to be an AC voltage, then the voltage gain will include both RFB and RI. So the output at that point, or the voltage at that point, right com coming right out of the op amp, is going to be the full voltage gain times the input voltage, plus the input offset voltage is just the DC value. There's no gain applied to it. And then once you pass it through this DC blocking or AC coupling capacitor, your actual V out will simply be the voltage gain given by your resistors times V in. Now this is a fairly easy solution, but it's not going to work in every application, in particular ones where you can't AC couple the input or the output. You can also build external compensation circuitry. And this time, in this one, we're looking at the compensation circuit for an inverting amplifier. And the way it works is like this. Let's call the point here from the potentiometer Vx. So that's going to be some value between plus Vr and minus Vr, depending on where you have the potentiometer dialed. And therefore, the voltage at the non-inverting pin will be Vx times Rp over Rp plus Rc. And now what we have here is something that looks like the difference amplifier. The output voltage is going to be the difference between this voltage and this voltage. So in effect, what we're doing is adding this voltage to the circuit. So as long as we've got your VX dialed to the right, right value, it will compensate for the input offset voltage. So here overall, our V out is going to be the non-inverting gain times the voltage at this point minus this half of the circuit. So that'll be the inverting gain times V in. So there's our inverting amplifier part, and that part there is our input offset voltage compensating part. You can do a similar injection to compensate a non-inverting amplifier, but this time you're injecting a voltage at the inverting terminal. So again, we have a voltage Vx that's set by where you dial the potentiometer. And again, this circuit becomes a difference amplifier, providing an output based on the proportional difference between Vn and Vx, where the proportion contributed by Vx will be the amount that is needed to compensate for the offset voltage. So V out is equal to the contribution from the non-inverting terminal, so that'll be the gain of the circuit, 1 plus RF over RG times V in, minus the contribution from the inverting part of the circuit. And this will hold true as long as RC is much bigger than RG. In actuality, these three methods are generally not that great for doing the compensation. For one, potentiometers are generally pretty unreliable. The resistance changes with the temperature and the wiper position could change, even if it's just through vibrations on the board. The two external compensation methods could actually use a DAC or digital to analog converter at this point, and that would make them easier to adjust and less susceptible to physical effects. But even then, they're not great solutions because if you're going to mass manufacture a circuit, Manually twiddling a knob on every circuit board or even adjusting a DAC can add a lot of overhead to the manufacturing process. It's probably going to be much easier to find an op amp with an offset as low as you need already. And modern manufacturing can get the offset quite low through a number of different technologies. One method is by trimming portions of the biasing resistor inside the semiconductor die until the offset is as low as needed. This trimming is typically done by a laser on the semiconductor wafer before it's packaged to cut away resistors that are biasing the voltage at the differential input until the desired offset is achieved. 
Another way to get the input offset voltage really low is by blowing fuses in the wafer like Texas Instrument does with its e-trim technology. And a third way is with feedback built into the amplifier that can nearly eliminate the input offset voltage. This feedback can bring it down lower than one microvolt. And the added advantage of these methods is that since they use an internal feedback loop to minimize offset, as the offset drifts, the feedback loop continues to keep the offset very low. Now these amplifiers may be referred to as auto zero op amps or chopper stabilized op amps, and both use feedback or feed forward circuits, but they are actually two different methods, both with the result of reducing input offset voltage to a very low level. The bottom line in all of this is that the input offset voltage can be an issue for your circuit, but it can be managed by either modifying your circuit using one of the methods that I've talked about, or by selecting an op amp with an offset voltage that is already low enough for your requirements. So that should give you a better understanding of the input offset voltage and what to do about it. Of course, there's a lot more to learn, and you can do that if you go to my website at www.electronx.ca, and you can find a link to that in the description. I hope that in the future, your input offset voltage doesn't lead to output voltage upset. Oh my god, that might be the worst one yet. Thank you so much for being here, my friends. See you soon.